sort of to review a little bit of energy stuff. So let's just remember we got four types we'll deal with on the exam. Um, and they work like this. I'm just going to name them. We've got gravity, elastic, kinetic, and dissipated. Kinetic's moving. Elastic is springs. Gravity is, well, being um, having height is and being on a planet. We got formulas, MGH, mass, gravity, height, and kinetic energy 1 F MV squared, and the principle uses the total energy before equals total energy after a process. So what we did is we did a couple problems. The first problem we did is something like this where we got um, gravity, energy, all at the top here, and no kinetic. And what ends up happening is when we reach the bottom, all our gravity energy gets converted into kinetic, and that's a general rule is that if I don't tell you, you should assume that there is absolutely no dissipated energy. So in this case, we're going to end up getting mgh equals one half. Actually, let's slow down. The gravity bar graph equals the kinetic energy bar graph. So we have mgh equals one half mv squared, and we put in our number. So we're going to end up getting 20 times 9.8 times the height of five meters, right there. Ends up equaling one half times the 20 times v squared. So we actually end up solving, and what we end up getting for our answer for the speed is. Nine point nine meters per second. Excellent. Now moving on. Uh, now we're going to dissipate ten percent of the energy. So we start off with all gravity. What happens is it becomes some kinetic, just a little bit of dissipated. So when we set up conservation of energy, we're going to have gravity energy equals kinetic plus this little bit of dissipated energy. So we're going to end up putting in our numbers as mgh equals one half m v squared plus e dissipated. Now we have to calculate e dissipated from the problem. There's never a specific formula for it. In this case, we know that the total energy that we start with is right here, and that's what we end up with. But it's split up in different ways. So if we can just take ten percent of all this gravitational energy that we started with, that'll be the amount that we lost. So we're going to have twenty times nine point eight times 5, and that's going to give us 98 joules. That's the unit of energy. Now, when I calculate mgh again, that's 980 equals 1 half times m times v squared plus 98. When we solve for v, we're going to end up getting 9.4 meters per second. Good. Now, let's move on to these extra problems that we did. Problem one, um, determine EG at the top of the platform for this diver. So we're going to have EG equals MGH, which is 60 times 9.8 times 10. And we're going to end up getting 5,880 joules of energy. How much EK does she have at the end? Well, energy is conserved and there's nothing dissipated. So it's still going to be 5,880 joules. Now we want to know her velocity and impact. Well, we're going to take that EK, equal it to 1 half MV squared. That's going to be 5,880 equals 1 half times her 60 kilogram mass times V squared. And we're going to end up getting V is about 14 meters per second. If we repeat steps A and B for the 75 kilogram diver, I'm just going to tell you right now you're going to end up getting 14 meters per second. If you jump from a platform twice as high, it actually turns out that her velocity to impact is 19.8. And you end up getting that it's about 1.4 times. If you were really careful and did your math, it's square root of 2, but I'm not going to worry about that on the final. Um, and if the, how much higher would the platform have to be in order for velocity to be twice as great? Doesn't matter for you 75 or 60. It'll work. But I will tell you this. The answer should be, it's 10 meters before, now 40 meters. So you need it to be four times as great. And finally, number two, if a 24 kilogram child descends and has a speed at the end, we don't know how much energy was dissipated. So we're going to end up getting EG equals EK plus E dissipated. So that's MGH equals one half MV squared plus E dissipated. Um, and so we're going to end up getting 24 
times 9.8 times 5 equals 1 half times 24 times 2.8 squared plus ED. When we solve for the dissipated energy, in the end, we will end up getting... A thousand eighty-one joules. Not bad. So that's it for our review for the final exam. Um, study hard, and I'll see you next week.